Well, welcome to another edition of the Cultivating Tradition podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Hung Rong Yen, who is an old friend and uh, also the current dean of the Taiwanese um, Taichung Chinese Medical University. Um, so, uh, Hung Rong, you've uh, had quite an interesting and full career. I was wondering if you can let us know a little bit about your background so that uh, the viewers can understand uh, where you've come from. Okay. Hello, Alex. Uh, nice to meet you again. Uh, I have known uh, Alex for a long time, uh, as a very uh, long time friend. And I'm also glad to uh, share some of our experience in Taiwan uh, to many of Alex's uh, friends and colleagues here in UK. So my name is Hong Rong Yen. I came from China Medical University, Taichung, Taiwan. I'm serving as a Dean of the College of Chinese Medicine at the CMU. I'm an uh, I'm a Western medical doctor as well as a traditional Chinese medical doctor. Thank you. So it, it's interesting actually in Taiwan that you can train in your training, you have the option. Uh, it's uh, uh, actually maybe if you just explain the stages of training in Taiwan, that would be quite interesting. There's seven years total, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so in Taiwan, uh, we have the higher education in Chinese medicine. So usually uh, school, high school graduate, they can uh, enter the school of Chinese medicine, which will take like uh, seven years mm. uh, for the total uh, ed education. And then uh, in the last year of their uh, uh, study, they also need to do an internship in the hospital uh, mm. uh, for a TCM internship. And after graduation, they also need to receive two-year postgraduate year training. This is so-called a PGY training in Chinese medicine if they want to uh, practice and have their own clinic in the future. And uh, for many of our students, they also want to advance their career mm. to be a, a TCM medical doctor in uh, uh, some of the medical centers or hospitals in Taiwan. So they have to receive an, an another additional two to four year uh, clinical training in different subspecialty, such as TCM gynecology, uh, internal medicine, acupuncture, or TCM pediatrics. Uh, that's that's really interesting. One of the things that we don't have um, really many structures for at all in the UK is that career progression. So when we graduate, that's it. We're let out into the world, and we have to make our own way and find our own training. So it's really interesting for us to understand that. Uh, Taiwan has this very um, uh, supportive hospital structure mm -hmm. and progression structure. And in that, I think in that seven years, it's, it's broken down. You have, is it four years is the first component? Is that right? And uh, Usually for the first and the second year, they will have a general education as well as some of the basic knowledge in uh, Chinese medicine theory and also uh, Western medicine theory and uh, uh, knowledge. And then starting from the year three to year four, until uh, they will have a more uh, in-depth uh, learning uh, in uh, different uh, aspects. And uh, and then uh, later on, they will, they will also have the education in in a clinical specialty uh, in year mm. five and uh, six. And the summer was, and for our students, they also need to receive the uh, clinical clerkship in uh, Western Medical Department in year six. And then uh, in year seven, they would uh, do the TCM internship in the hospital. Now, when you did your training, you did an extra bit, which meant that you were you could actually become a fully trained Western doctor as well as Chinese doctor. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so every year, uh, those who enter our school of Chinese medicine, uh, some of them, they are, uh, so this is a very uh, highly seductive. Uh, like uh, half of them can also do a double major mm. in Western medicine. So, for example, I also did my double major during this uh, seven year. So this also means that every year is more like uh, having three semester instead of just only two semester. Right. I have to do. I have to learn more wow. about uh, Western medical knowledge, and also uh, fulfill my uh, uh, clinical observation and clerkship in a hospital for Western medicine. Yeah. Well, um, and uh, when I first met you, um, you were talking about, you had a lecture about how you work together uh, in oncology uh, in an integrative way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, was, was it right that you had a, an office next to 
an, an oncologist and you would work together on oncology patients? Yeah, uh, actually uh, not only on uh, cancer patients. Mm. So uh, in our university hospital, we provide this kind of a joint clinic for different subspecialty. For example, in a children's hospital, I also see the same patient with our pediatrician uh, to treat the same patient. So for example, those who have asthma, when they come to our hospital, they can come to see a TCM doctor. And then I will also refer the patient to see the uh, PTH at a gorge if necessary. And uh, so we have this kind of uh, referral between each other very mm. often. Even uh, in the inpatient department, our uh, Western medical doctor, such as a neurologist or neurosurgeon, uh, when they uh, have the patient who have stroke, after the emergent care, they will also consult our acupuncture mm. doctor to do acupuncture treatment uh, for this patient. So it's more like a, a, a traditional Chinese medicine is also integ integrated into this uh, uh, healthcare system as a team member of the whole uh, person care. It, it's it's something that uh, I think you know when certainly when I hear about Taiwan and my experience uh, seeing um, how Chinese medicine is practiced. Uh, it's it's kind of our, our dream. We'd, we'd love to be there <laughs> in this uh, in this setup. Um, so uh, as you also mentioned, you worked in pediatrics, um, and one of the other things that you did was uh, um, uh, did you set up the research center in uh, in Taiwan? Were you one of the founders of, of the research center? And maybe you could tell us a little bit about the research yes. work you've done. Yes, so uh, I was recruited to CMU, which is also my alma mater. So in 2014, we established this uh, Chinese Medicine Research Center, mm. which uh, received the funding support from our Ministry of Education. So every year, uh, we receive uh, 1 million US dollar funding support to conduct research in acupuncture and uh, Chinese herbal medicine. And, and uh, we have a quite full for result and uh, try to uh, conduct high quality uh, Chinese medicine research to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, support the uh, continuation or the progress of the Chinese medicine in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, if there's someone listening who's interested, if you search for uh, Dr. Yen's name um, on, on ResearchGate, you'll see a lot of the research that's come out of that uh, research department. Um, and one of the common types of study that you've done, uh, is, it, is it correct to call it retrospective cohort study? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. And that's only made possible because of the, uh, the system of uh, digital information uh, on the health cards uh, in, uh, in Taiwan. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that, because it's very interesting that Taiwan records all of its health data, which can be used for uh, analysis later on. Yes. So Taiwan launched the National Health Insurance Program in 1995. And uh, in the first year, only the Western medical uh, treatment were reimbursed by the National Health Insurance Program. Mm. But then uh, in 1996, uh, all of the TCM treatment, including uh, concentrated herbal granules in Chinese medicine, and also uh, acupuncture and the TCM traumatology trainer, uh, were being reimbursed by the health care uh, for health insurance. So we are very lucky to have uh, more than uh, uh, approximately like a 30 year data from uh, 1996. So this national health insurance program covered more than 99% of the uh, residents in Taiwan. So uh, everyone uh, can go to see a TCM doctor or Western medical doctor without worry about the uh, healthcare cost. It's um uh, and and all of the data is recorded, um, and uh, so a um, patient has a card. They'll bring that card to the consultation. They put it in the machine. Yes. <laughs> and so at first, it's very convenient for the doctor, isn't it? Because all of their health data comes up. So yeah. they'll have, you know, maybe the surgeries they've had before or med all the medical history. Yeah. Um, but also what's recorded is all the herbal formulas. Mm -hmm. Also acupuncture points. They, can, uh, they, they record which acupuncture points are used and things like that or? Uh, so let me explain this yeah. to you. So uh, everyone who, uh, every insurer will have the IC card with the IC chip and uh, which can connect to the cloud system yeah. established by the National Health Insurance Administration. So um, 
when you go to see a doctor, uh, you insert an uh, insurance card and uh, all of your uh, information, including the past uh, examinations and laboratory tests, and even your uh, medication, including Chinese medicine, acupuncture, or uh, Western medicine, will be revealed to the doctor, to the physician who are, uh, who are seeing you. And, but of course, this will get a permit uh, from yeah. you first. So if the patient signed the permit, the doctor can see the past history and also past the medical records of the patient. If the patient say no, then the doctor still uh, will be able to uh, recall uh, the uh, the medical visit uh, yeah. to the IC card, and then this will connect it to the cloud system. So the good thing is that uh, it already covered uh, 23 million people in Taiwan uh, for a about uh, 30 years. Yeah. So we can do a long-term follow-up of this patient when they go to see a Western medical doctor or Chinese medical doctor. So the good thing is that uh, using this kind of retrospective cohort study, yeah. Yeah, we can uh, see whether if acupuncture or Chinese herbal medicine can benefit the patient. And so the, these studies, are, um, I, I found absolutely fascinating because, you know, from a... Um, we can see what both the, the Chinese and Western medical interventions. You can do things like do studies on are there herb drug interactions, right? Because you can see what herbs are being used and what Western medicines are being used. Yes, uh, and it it's a, it's a rich pool of data, effectively. Yes. Yeah. So, for example, uh, if a patient are using Angelica mm. Sinek, like a Tangue yeah. or a wafering or aspirin. You, uh, if you worry about this kind of interaction, you can also use the database to see if it, it will have any effect on the breathing disorders. And does it rec re also record the Chinese medical diagnosis as well? Uh, no, unfortunately, mm. oh, because the I, uh, because the uh, WHO's ICD-10 yeah. uh, so far didn't include a traditional medical diagnosis. But the good okay. thing is that uh, nowadays the ICD-11 has a traditional medicine module. And uh, so all of the uh, traditional medicine diagnosis, such as qi deficiency, blood deficiency, yeah. nowadays is also available in the ICD-11. So in, in Taiwan, I think uh, in most of the country, nowadays are using the ICD-10, yeah. but the ICD-11 is now available. So I'm uh, the one who is in charge of the project. Wow. to implement ICD-11 traditional medicine diagnosis in Taiwan. So hopefully in the near future, we can uh, also have the TCM diagnosis when we retrieve the data from the uh, big data set. What are some of your, um, I mean, that's fantastic as well, seeing going forward, I think that's exciting. Um, what are some of them, uh, the most notable findings you found, like interesting things that you found with the retrospective cohort studies? Yeah, I think that there are a couple of things that we can do from this uh, retrospective cohort study. Mm -hmm. The first thing is that uh, if you want to understand uh, how many people are using acupuncture mm -hmm. and uh, uh, like, uh, which gender or which age and uh, what's their preference for using acupuncture, you can use this kind of epidemiological data to yeah. understand the utilization of traditional Chinese medicine or acupuncture. But then uh, the next step is that if you want to know whether if acupuncture can work, uh, can benefit this patient to reduce the long-term uh, complication of because of a disease or to improve their survival or uh, things like this, you can uh, determine uh, what kind of outcome that you want to study and use this data set and uh, select a good control group, like uh, for example, those who didn't combine acupuncture use versus those uh, use acupuncture uh, for their disease. And uh, the third, uh, the third uh, uh, study, the third kind of study that you can do is that uh, from this study, you can understand whether if acupuncture or TCM treatment will be able to reduce medical expenditure. So wow. this is a more, even yeah. uh, for me, is it, this is a more convincing when we want to persuade the government or the, to persuade the health insurance program to invest more uh, on uh, traditional Chinese medicine or acupuncture uh, uh, reimbursement. Because 
when we give acupuncture treatment for those patients who have a OA osteoarthritis, we found that it can reduce the medical expenditure. Patients will have a better function or reduce their uh, complications so that they do not have to receive the surgery or like a osteoarthritis rep a knee replacement. So I think this is so amazing. Using this data, we can also uh, think about what kind of uh, regulation or policy that we can persuade the government to do. That's incredibly important. And uh, one thing that I've been discovering in my position here is that uh, proving that acupuncture works is one thing. I mean, and it is obviously useful to do, but uh, proving that it's cost effective, proving that they're good outcomes, and also having trust in the professionals that are, that are um, performing it uh, may be even more important. Um, and so, you know, the final question I wanted to ask you is that Taiwan has such a well developed Chinese medicine sector, and it wasn't always that way. It's got better over time, I yeah. understand. It's not just because Chinese medicine is part of Taiwanese culture. Um, people had to work to make these frameworks, to make it as professional as it is, and accepted. Um, in many ways, the situation in the UK is still in its infancy. Uh, do you have any advice for us on how, what are the important things that we need to focus on to move forward and gain that professionalization, that level of development that Taiwan has? Yeah. I think there are a couple of things that are very important uh, to be able to achieve the status that we have uh, nowadays. The first thing is that you need to have a high quality education and uh, also good uh, postgraduate clinical training. Then you also need to do research uh, with, uh, with, with the support of this kind of evidence. You will be able to go to the next step which is uh, even more important for the whole uh, TCM industry is the uh, regulation. So if you can uh, provide the, the uh, good quality uh, research evidence, mm. you can also uh, persuade the government, uh, persuade the, the stakeholders to invest more in this uh, field. I think it's, uh, I, I'm definitely coming to a similar position about this. And one of the key linchpins is having that good standards, those good standards which are proven by good regulation. So we have the standards and then the regulation, uh, and then that enables us to do the high quality research and to project ourselves more into that space where we can start to actually gain that more credibility. So it's really interesting to hear that's what your emphasis is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Actually, our university was established in 1958. At that time, there was no uh, TCM uh, school in Taiwan until we launched this uh, uh, TCM program in a higher education setting. You know, in the past, the people used to learn Chinese medicine from the teacher, from the master, mm. and there's no quality control. So you never know uh, how good you are in acupuncture or in Chinese medicine. It's all recognized by your teacher. Say, oh, mm. you, uh, you, you're done. You, you finish your learning, so you can mm. now become a TCM doctor. But until that, we put it in the higher education setting and have a, a more uh, 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 high standard or like a quality control of the education and the training. Then we train uh, students like me who are being able to practice Chinese yeah. medicine. When I learned Chinese medicine uh, back to uh, more than thirty years ago. My Western medical teacher told me, ah, TCM is not scientific. And my Chinese medical teacher, they told me, oh, Western medicine usually have a lot of side effects. Still, you see, even though it's in the higher education setting, yeah. back to more than 30 years ago, there are still some conflict. But nowadays, we overcome this kind of a conflict, yeah. this kind of fighting between Western and the Chinese medical uh, doctors. Amazing. Uh, I think that there is uh, something that I think the phase that we are in in the UK is we need a maturing of our profession. Mm -hmm. And that means uh, building relationships yes. and uh, building that trust. And it doesn't mean, and also I know because I've been to Taiwan, doesn't mean that you lose the traditional authenticity and the, 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 the benefits that you have from that kind of lineage training. Uh, it just means that at a, at a certain point, it has to do something. It has to actually be professional and you, you have to have the relationships with other people within the health profession and you have to have good outcomes. You know, it has to be measured in some way. So 
it's um as i say i i feel that that the direction that taiwan's moved in is uh really incredible and to know that it came from very little in 1950 and it's built up to where it is yeah. i i think that we have to have that vision in our country too that these things are possible that we can move to something that's really uh um inspiring so uh, finally i just wanted to ask you about the uh, master's program that you have for international students uh, i think that might be of interest to our members yes so i started to serve as a dean of the culture chinese medicine at cmu four years ago and then uh, uh, in our uh, college, we have decided to provide a scholarship for international students mm. who are interested in learning Chinese medicine or acupuncture in English. So we have this all uh, English taught uh, international master program in acupuncture or in integrative health. So uh, students who are, uh, this is only for uh, international student, not for domestic student in Taiwan. So if uh, there are any people here who are interested in learning in Taiwan, if they have your recommendation, I have to emphasize, I need to have your recommendation later. I will give the one year tuition fee waiver uh, to all of these applicants with your endorsement. It is a, an incredible opportunity uh, having, you know, I think that if people even have the opportunity to come to Taiwan, visit the hospital and see uh, the uh, the facilities and how things are, are run, uh, it, it's a really great opportunity, but to actually have the chance to do a two year masters and immerse themselves in that framework uh, and have that level of high training. I think it's vital that some of our members go to Taiwan and learn so they can bring back their experience and help us grow in the UK. Yes. So, well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yen. You took some time out of your busy schedule. You're off to your next conference. Um, but I hope to see you again, maybe in Taiwan in the, in the future. Um, but yeah, I'm very grateful that our members got to hear from you and, and some of the great work that's been happening in Taiwan. Yeah, uh, I'm also very happy to see you here and also share our experience to everyone. Uh, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah.